the one separates itself into the many, as Emily Fletcher says, mm. simply for the joy of becoming one again. And I think we go through this series of softenings, as Richard Rudd says, right, where we can start to figure out how to turn our pain into purpose. You know, and, and I think this is a really important aspect of this too, because you touched on it earlier. We all are tempted to believe that the world should look the way we think it should look. <laughs> yeah. What a surprise. Yeah. Right? I think the world should be, everyone should be interested in math, right? <laughs> everyone should love geometry. Everyone should, oh, what a surprise. Wait, wait, that's just my paradigm. Okay, that's my facet. I understand now, I've grown up a little bit, I understand that not everybody sees the world like I do. In fact, when I was younger, I used to think everybody had to see the world like I do because I see it logically. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And then I realized, wait, nobody sees the world like I do and what's wrong with me? I need to change myself to be more like other people. Or the alternative, I need to change everyone else. Or I need like to change <laughs> everyone else, right? I need to change everyone else to be like me, yeah. right? And, and so the same is true with our judgments. You know, if you were a mountain climber, and let's say you decided to climb El Cap and you fell. I was there once in Idlewild. Climbing the side of the mountain is like one of the craziest things I've ever done in my life. And, you know, you're up 2,000 feet. It's like, you know, if you fall at, at 50 feet or you fall at 2,000 feet, you're still just dead. Right? <laughs> it's like, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, it's just like, the radius of the splatter but changes. Some, <laughs> that's right. But somehow when you're up there on the side of the mountain and you see a helicopter show up, because somebody fell, that scares the bejesus out of you. I could tell you. Yeah. I was like all of a sudden shaking on that side. And I'm like, I don't want to fall. I don't want to fall. And you see these little pins that are holding you in the side up there. You're like, how could this really be the thing that's holding me up here? <laughs> like, seriously, I was like scared shitless. But let's say you fell. You were <laughs> going to take the helicopter ride. And maybe the radius of splat was small. Maybe it was large. Whatever. <laughs> but you fell. I could judge you and say, why the hell? Would this guy climb with no ropes? That's just stupid. That's my perspective. How many other things can we apply that line of thinking to? It's your choice what you experienced ultimately. It's very, you know, Helen Keller said that the only thing worse than blindness is to have sight without vision. Mm. Bar is Helen Keller. So good. And she's amazing, right? She's amazing. This woman was, you know, completely paralyzed. She was deaf and she was blind. And yet she impacted tens of millions of people's lives as an inspiration to this day. And we could sit there and say, and she could have sat, sat there and said, woe is me. I'm a victim. Look at all this. I mean, look what happened to me. And yet she didn't. She was empowered, and her power then extended forth from her gratitude for still having the existence that she probably at some stage realized that she had a role in that decision process for what she experienced. Now, I could judge and say, why would she ever have chosen that? That just happened to her. But that's probably a little pompous and arrogant of me to say that what I have chosen for my life should be what other people choose for theirs. And this is the narcissism of which I speak. Mm -hmm. Because narcissism is not only extending to your own self-loathing, it's also applying a standard of what everyone else should be doing. And that is the doorway. Once we finally wake up to that, then we can start to actually become truly awakened. And then two things happen. I think one of the first things that happens is people start hating themselves. So the narcissist who wakes up is like the, the, the classic case. You're going through these steps of alchemy, which starts off with nigredo, which you start to be confronted by your shadow. And then you get in this next stage called albedo, which is the whitening. It's represented by a swan, a white swan. And this is usually a stage people think they're enlightened, right? And, and so they're like, oh, I've made it. I'm enlightened now, right? And they're still very judgmental. They just don't, don't necessarily realize it. Mm -hmm. They're not fully aware of it. And so then they go through that stage and then they, then they get kind of crushed again, right? That's usually what happens. You get like a life crisis and then you go into citronitis and you start having the eyes of the peacocks. When a peacock spreads its feathers, it all has eyes all over it, right? That's the representation of you starting to gain from many different facets of perspective. 
And then you go into the Rubedo, which represents the marriage of the Red King and the White Queen, which comes into the twin flame dynamic, which is happy to talk about that anytime as well. And then also, you then go into the Phoenix stage. That's the rising stage. It's when the snake, this you know, abhorred aspect of yourself, starts to rise and resurrect and become an enlightened avatar. And these are the steps of alchemy. And so basically what happens often is people get in this stage where they start to, after they've gone through albedo and then they get smacked down again in life and right before they get their full awakening of their different eyes. And that process continues. It's not like it's all step by step. Some of these different steps can happen at different points. It depends on how you chose it in your menu of life. But basically what happens is often people will start to abhor their personas. So it becomes kind of an opposite of narcissism. So I don't want to be a narcissist anymore. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hate my entire self, right? It's not just <laughs> not just the parts of me that I don't want to project. Yeah. I'm gonna hate my entire self. And I'm gonna start referring to myself as a different name. I'm gonna change my name. You know, I'm not gonna be Robert Grant anymore. Uh, I'm gonna be one divine, or I'm gonna be something else, right? And there's like, how many one divines can there be? <laughs> so yeah. point being that. The ultimate realization is when you realize that your persona existed for a reason to expand consciousness, that your eyes of perception are there for a beautiful reason to serve the universe and its growth and expansion, but also because you wanted to learn certain aspects. So there's this beautiful convergence of learning on both sides. And that's how the universe tears itself into two or the one tears itself into the many for that joy and realization of and remembrance of who it is and then the reconvergence back together again. So we don't have to not like who we become. In fact, we start to fall in love with who we become and we fall in love with everybody else too. And we fall in love with the existence around us. This earth is not an escape room to be escaped, I believe. I believe the only way to transcend this experience of duality is to fall in love with it just as it is.